Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that you give to us, for all the amazing things that you do uh, in our lives and the lives of those around us. We pray that you continue to work mightily, um, not only for us, but through us, uh, that others may know of your power, your love, your and your blessings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Um, so we are on First John chapter 3. Uh, mm-hmm. Boy, you know what? What Next, question are we on now? Huh? What, what's the question on? What, what, what we are on page, let's see, it would be page on 6, page. Uh, down toward the bottom. Does God's seed abide in you? About uh, fourth question from the bottom. Okay. Yeah, I, I just realized that we're on um, page six of the study guide, and um, there's like ten pages. And next week is our last week. Yeah, I remember you said we could <laughs> yeah. be done by. <laughs> We'll have to pick it up then. Yeah, so. Another time. So, yeah, we're not even going to finish first John. Um, much less the two and three. Um, so, yeah, once we're done with Genesis, then we'll come back to it and, and wrap it up. So, those of you who are um, watching online, um, just so you don't get confused about what happened, you didn't finish. Uh, oh, so then Genesis will be. Right. Then we'll. Genesis will. All right. On the tenth, so which is two weeks from right. now, um, <coughs> we will. That's going to be the big um, presentation um, in the afternoon, and then uh, we won't have class that evening. And um, and then on the seventeenth, then we'll start our regular um, Sunday evening seven o'clock class, and. Um, and then we will start Genesis then. This might be my last <laughs> oh, I don't cry when it gets sure, dark. Yeah, yeah, it's it's I'm, yeah, yeah I, I, it you bothers too? me too. Yeah. yeah, it's getting darker. I mean, yeah, you know. I know what you mean. Mm. I used to laugh at old people, but <laughs> <laughs> now I laugh at myself. <laughs> Did you say we are doing a s- finishing next week? So yeah, next week's the third. Last of we, John. Yeah, we will. John. Uh, we will. Yeah, we'll do the Epistles of John yet, or First John <coughs> next week. See how far we get, and then. Um, so you know, by the time the days start getting longer again, and we get back into John, that'll probably be that. That'll probably work out for you. <laughs> That's what I always wait for the first day of winter. And then I say, okay, now two minutes this way. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so, first John, let's, um, it's first John chapter three. And, oh, let's look at, well, this one, we can go with um, nine through just 9 and 10. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God nor is anyone who does not love his brother. Okay. So, um, in in 3.9 it says, uh, um, God's seed remains in him, um, who is born of God. So, does God's seed abide or remain in you? What does that mean? Any idea what that means? That would have to be associated with baptism. Okay. Um, yeah. Faith. Yeah. Faith. Faith. Yeah. All right. The word seed there um, is a reproductive term, um, and uh, and the idea is passing on the characteristics yeah. of the father. And and what? It's passing on the characteristics of the father. Um. All right. So, um, and my 
translation in the RSV says nature. Well, that's an interesting translation. For God's nature abides in him. Well, that that kind of conveys the right. the meaning the, the of the father, it. the being like the father. Uh huh. But this is, you know, what this is talking about is you know, the man's seed, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you. Uh, there's a number of years ago, Amy Grant had a, a song called "My Father's Eyes." Yes, I and remember that. Yeah, and I was just <coughs> listening to it the other day, and um, you know, it's, it's the idea that I want I want people to um, I want to have my father's eyes um, talking about God eyes to see the good in things when good can't be found, and and, that. Um, and so yeah, the idea is that we should. Um, and this is, you know, interesting because the Bible talks about us being adopted into God's family, and yet as members of His family, that um, we pick up His characteristics. Um, and and John here specifically is talking about love, um, that we learn to love um, because of the love of God that's given to us, that's, that's passed on to us as members of His family. So, neat thing about God is that He can pass on His characteristics. Um, even though we're not, even though we're adopted children, mm -hmm. but of course we're his children to begin with. Mm -hmm. He just had to buy us back. All right. Uh, what does three ten tell us about the relationship between faith and works? Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. I put above works fruit, and I, I put that our faith can be shown to the world by our works and witness. It's witness. I don't know. I wasn't quite sure exactly what they were getting at there, but that's what I... Okay. Anybody else? As Lutherans, we struggle with this a little bit. Um, just because we put so much emphasis on faith, sometimes we forget to talk about works, or, or we sort of you hear works and you go, oh, we're not going to talk about works because we don't want anyone to think works righteousness, you know, and so we're just not going to talk about works. Well, no, works are an important part of all this. Our works don't save us, no. right? But James says if you have faith, you'll have works, yes. right? And the way that I always explain it is, faith is is a byproduct. Of works, you can't make cheese and not have whey. All right. Well, faith is the cheese. That's my Wisconsin, you know, stuff. Faith <laughs> you know, is you know a where your hat. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you yeah. say yeah. faith is a byproduct of works? I'm sorry. Did I say that? <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for correcting me. <laughs> oh, no. I'm I sorry. Catch that. Switch that around. All right. Works are a byproduct of faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's preserved for eternity, too. <laughs> I'm going to get written up somewhere. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Works are a byproduct of faith. God produces faith in us, all right? And then works just naturally fro flow That's from faith. Right. And um, and so it's it's not the... You know, and, and really... Sometimes, you know, as pastors especially will get frustrated sometimes with their churches and they go, how do I get my people to do this or that or, or whatever? And, and, you know, and, and sometimes we try to, to do that and, and, you know, and what it comes down to is the, the answer is actually preach the gospel. Yes. And you can't beat and people over the, the head with things and you can't, mm -hmm. you, you can't grab them by the ear and, you yeah. know, come on and, and stuff. No, you, you, preach the gospel and because the gospel produces faith and, and faith produces good works mm -hmm. right if you preach the law and, and kind of hammer people with it what's going to happen is a lot of times you'll get sort of a short-term response um the the people oh i need to be good mm -hmm. you know or, or whatever i, I need, need to, to do better yeah i need to do better you know and they'll do it for like a week or two maybe longer depending on what it is uh, or, or how difficult it is, or, or, or how inconvenient it is, and then, but after a while they go, oh, I just can't do it, and they give up, <laughs> because you know, 
they're not they're not doing it out of joy and saying, oh, I have this great opportunity and this is great and I love this and I'm you know and I'm going to be able to do this. You know, instead it's like it's my duty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have to, yeah. Which God in Scripture doesn't like that. No. He says he doesn't. So. Right. Yeah. He loves a cheerful giver. So you better be cheerful. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, that doesn't okay. work. I'm going to smile. Yep. yep. Put on your press on smile, you know. But and you know, so many things, in, in all honesty, even just going, and I say just, but going to church, things are just, they, they become a habit. You just do. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> I wake up Sunday morning and I think, oh, wow, I don't know that it's faith working in me. I just know it's well, Sunday and you go to church. You know, the the reality is is that as sinners, the you know the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. Yeah. And so there's something to be said for habits because people do fall out of the habit, and then and it's hard to get back into the habit. Um, you yeah. know the you, you you miss one week and and you go mm. oh you know I don't feel good or whatever this week but I'll go next week all right so so next week you go well I'm feeling better than last week but I'm still not feeling great I'll go next week well after two weeks like yeah now that's uh, not ever been the case with me when I miss sure. but maybe it's not even um maybe it's not even habit as much as it's just a way of life I mean Sunday is mm-hmm. the Lord's day and you go to church I sure yeah mm-hmm. yeah and you know and that's that's the benefit of habits you know and yeah and I mean benefit, I have a lot it's... of bad habits too so <laughs> yeah. but, uh, well <laughs> I'm, sure, sure. I'm not alone maybe no nope. rude but, yeah. I <laughs> can't believe <Yeah>. that <laughs> not Ruth <laughs> <laughs> Now, nope. you should have said that like you meant it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry. No, I my, my family can tell you all about my bad habits. So. <laughs> Laughter's good, Ruth. Is that why you told Kim she couldn't come anymore? <laughs> no, she's... What? We told her that she had to have her room cleaned up um, for the... Um, <laughs> No, because we need to have the um, get the fire inspection for foster care, and um, oh. and and so she opted yesterday to take a nap for a while instead, um, just because she's been busy with so many things. She's and a girl after my own heart. And you always need a nap, really. Yeah, you feel and, so well, much and better. she's smart enough to do that. And plus, she had her her big contest yesterday and stuff, so it was important that she did. But at the same time. It was, you know, like, look, you've got certain things you need to accomplish this weekend. Yeah. And, um, I understand that. So, although I have to confess that it's it's a very weird thing to use Bible, Bible class as sort of a carrot to, to get her to do things. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's that's great, but at the same time, I mean, like, yeah, our, our kids, you know, it, it, it's always been, they've always enjoyed church and, and stuff like that, and and you know, and we could actually—I don't know if we ever actually did, but we were really tempted a few times to go. If you don't knock it off, you're not, you're going, not going to church, church you know. <laughs> and there would be kids who would say, oh, "Great, yeah. I'll be even worse." Yeah, <laughs> but, but I mean, I don't think we'd ever do that because there's no way that we can follow through on it. And what kind of a message would we be sending? <laughs> <laughs> but but it was, we were tempted a few times. Did you hear the pastor won't let his children go to <laughs> yeah, church? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, I once things settle down for her, she'll be back. But she's just she's had some pretty busy weekends, and I think last time it was just she still had homework to do or something like that. But. I'm glad to hear. I really, I'm. It does my heart good to hear you say things like that. Right? I mean, we do. Mm-hmm. With our kids, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, and I still do. Although my kids are probably even older than you are, I don't know, but yeah, I know older than you are. But right. Yeah. All right. Um. Oh, speaking of kids, another just off-topic thing, but um, I thought this was really neat. The the high school Sunday school class, um, they're taking turns. The 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 kids are taking turns teaching the class. David's oh, there to help him out and back him so up and, and stuff like that. Oh, it's but, so good. Yeah, isn't that great? Now, is that David Chase? Yeah, that yeah. Class? Okay. 
Yeah, so and he's how he's in the class. I think that's what's that? How many is in the class? Um, I think he's like three or four or something like that. It's, oh, it's not a charge. lot. But um, hmm. but yeah, he's there. Each week, someone um, they just I think they just started this week, but he's gonna have them mm -hmm. um, do it. Uh, wow, what a mm -hmm. that's a good project, you know, because we can't keep the keep, we can't keep the young people in church. Mm -hmm. They get uh, confirmed and everything, or you never see them again. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's true. Really, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I just I I thought <laughs> you know to train them so that someday they can you know be leading yeah, bible studies yeah. wherever whether they're around here or they end up somewhere mm -hmm. else or whatever yeah. um but also you know the teacher always learns more than the students and that's um, true and, and it absolutely is true and and so um you know so what a, it's just such a great thing for them. we so, used to yeah. have yeah. several people that taught bible study classes and we really don't have too many people right now that are, are willing to teach so it's good to have that kind of thing going on that, that they're preparing for yeah. the yeah. future. So. Yeah, so I thought, what a, that's just brilliant. I love mm -hmm. it. So. All right. Um, it works. All right. Uh, verses 13 to 22. Uh, do not wander, brethren. Now, my, my paper says 13 to 24, but you want me to read 13? Did I say, I'm sorry, 13 oh. to 24. Oh, okay. My bad. Um, um, do, do not wonder, brethren, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. He who does not love abides in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But if any one has the world's goods, and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and we receive Him from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who keep his commandments abide in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit which he has given us. Right. <clears throat> so, um, does the world hate you? Verse 13. So don't be surprised if the world hates you. Well, yes, actually. They hate us individually and as a group. Okay. And they're afraid of us too, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not so hearing you. I said, yes, <laughs> I think the world hates us personally, you know, individually, and also as a group, and I think they're afraid of us. Uh, and I think I see it a lot in um, politics. Um, people who espouse um, Christianity, I mean, true Christianity, a belief in Christ as personal Savior. A lot of people don't understand that and they don't know what to do with it and it kind of makes them uneasy because it's like somebody has something that they don't have and they don't know about it and I'm always kind of astonished at some of the remarks that they make on some of the news talk programs you know mm -hmm. and um, it's interesting yeah, you know, it, it's it's really astonishing sometimes when you you hear um, people talking about Christians like and um, like like the 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 same way they would talk about cults, you know, mm -hmm. and and um, or uh, when you have there was uh, recently a, a I was reading a. Um, a judge's decision um, 
and and it was talking he actually mentioned in his decision in his findings that well a lot of the people that that voted for this law were the were evangelical Christians Ooh. so therefore he was and his, so his argument was well that kind of invalidates the law because they were influenced by their religion you know what what <laughs> mm -hmm. you know and or, or this is another one of my favorites it was um you know the, these questions about whether it's okay to have a, a nativity scene on the courthouse lawn or on christmas time you know and that kind of thing and uh and there was there was this one community they had um like a a, a star of david and a menorah for hanukkah and, and then like a, a kwanzaa thing but there was no nativity scene and they said why don't we have a nativity scene here well, separation of church and state. That's a good one. I gotta that's remember what, that one. Crazy. It's just yeah. crazy. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Mm. We Christians <laughs> must be steadfast and not shrink back. You know, I don't think we have to be nasty and confrontational, but we do have to be steady, steady forward, and don't put up with this. Well, but at the same time, to speak the truth in love. Yes. You know, oh, yes. and I agree. you know, not get nasty and you know, go well, around no, burning no, Qurans or something that. like that. I said we don't need to be confrontational. Well, right. Okay. And mean. I'm sorry. Right. We don't. We, <laughs> but we do need to be. We need to be firm. You know, I, you can be firm without being mean. Yeah. Because if you're if you're if you're telling the truth, if you know the truth, it's easy to be firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what it comes down to is even from a, a sort of political standpoint, um, that you know, I, sometimes I hear, well, this person, you're ma you're making that decision because your religious beliefs. Well, no matter what your beliefs are even if you're an atheist, right, your beliefs are going to shape your view of reality, of the world, and what's good and what's bad, and, and all that kind of thing. And so, so why is it that everybody has to take an atheistic viewpoint in order to decide what's good and what's bad? It makes no sense, all right? Um, yes, we need to... to um, we need to be open to other people's perspectives and um you know and, and and hear what they have to say and if they they have a good idea you know from a, a legal standpoint or whatever then we should hear them out um and we need to make sure that um you know i think sometimes sometimes i, I find various religious groups not just christians a lot of times christians get pegged with this but it, it's true of, of various groups um that we shouldn't be surprised when, and like John is saying here, that um, that the the world doesn't sort of meet our expectations, or you know. And I think about um, schools that that during Lent serve um, won't serve meat for lunch, <laughs> right? And on the one hand, like as a as a Lutheran. <laughs> That always irritated me when I was yeah. growing up, right? Because <laughs> I said, I'm not Catholic. Why should oh. I be, you know, subject to that? Our nursing uh, home did that. All through any of the, the Catholic whatevers, the nursing home followed those rules. Yeah, and so, we so the... Catholic. um I, the cat wouldn't bother me. Well, you never had my school's fish. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know I, I notice here they have that's always offered as one of the options but they have two different options and then there's some sort of meat you know yeah. thing yeah. and um which which is nice but you know i think about well they don't have kosher you know food for the jewish kids mm -hmm. and they don't you know although in some communities they do mm -hmm. where there's a very large jewish presence yeah you know you'll have sort of it's a, a kosher option if, mm -hmm. if there's enough people that are going to take advantage of it then it's worthwhile to do it you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but yeah sometimes there's 
um, a particular group is is, is going to really push for that that their what they want not just a sort of sense of right and wrong but something that's part of their kind of culture or whatever um, that they really want that thing and and you know to expect the rest of the world to 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 go oh well oh you want the stores closed on Sundays so that you can all go to church well I don't go to church and so you know why should that be the case for me and 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 while on the one hand it's um, it's nice for um, to to allow people to do that there are people that have to work on Sundays you know mm -hmm. and um, and so we as Christians can't really demand that the world close all their stores on Sundays for us you know um, it's just it's not fair for us to ask that Mm -hmm. um, would it, you know, would it be a good thing? Yeah, probably. I mean, even just for the sake of giving people time to spend with their families, if nothing else, you know. But gee, how long ago were there the Sunday blue laws? Oh, yeah. I, I was. On the books a long time. Know, there, was, there are still businesses that you know that are closed on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. right. I mean, I do. <laughs> that you thought well, well, yeah. right, Bill and I would. But. And there were some in Elyria there a few years ago. That were closed on Saturday because they were Jewish and they did sure. um, observe yeah. the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, we. I mean, we do need to be careful about, you know, sort of expecting people to to go out of their way to allow us to practice our um, our religious whatever. Um, you know, we can't really expect people to do that. And, and in fact, you know, how loving are we being to the world when we're saying, get out of my way, you know, I'm going to worship Jesus, you know. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, at the same time, does the world hate us? Yeah, and you're right. They're scared. And I don't want them to be scared. No, I don't mm. either, but, but they are. They're and and I, and I don't understand that. Um, but at, at the same time, uh, you, uh, if you're an atheist, try running for president in this country. It can happen. I don't care how good of, of a, um, you are at, you know, you could have the, um, you could have a, a, a solution for the economy and, a, a you know, right down the line and you, and you lay it out and people go, wow, that's brilliant. Oh, that'll work, you know, and. And wow, we never thought of that. And, and wow, that's great and everything. Oh, you're an atheist, or oh, you're a Muslim. Oh well, nope, sorry, no way. All right, and that's not right either. You know, Luther said I'd rather have a um, a heathen prince that is good at ruling yeah. than a Christian one who Put is chops incompetent. off people's heads. <laughs> Or burns them at the stake. Well, but, you know, I mean, even one who's really is a Christian, yeah. right, but it's just incompetent when it comes to ruling, you know, that it right. becomes the whole question of vocation. We should, you know, the best person for the job, because that just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're automatically good at anything. Mm -hmm. right. Um, all right. <clears throat> What? All right. This is. All right, this seems like a little bit of a strange question. Yeah, um, I'm so too. What is because modify? A uh, little grammar um, thing here. And and in fact, it doesn't even say because in, in some of them. Um. In, still looking at verse thirteen. Uh, do not be surprised or uh, do not wonder. Um, if the world hates her, um, oh no, I'm sorry. Verse 14. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. All right. This is still that sort of faith and works thing. All right. We have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Yeah. I, I see. I'm really. I'm. I'm not following that. And so yeah. So wait, wait a minute. So because Salvation. I love my brother, because I love my brother, right, right. Doesn't that sound kind of like word practice? Yeah. So let's uh, take a look at 
same John, but Gospel of John now, back in the in the Gospels, um, chapter five, verse twenty-four. Five twenty-two. John five twenty-four. Excuse me. Tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Right. So, looking again at you know what, taking that idea, hearing his word and believing it, and then going back and and looking at verse fourteen, or yeah, um, in First John. We know we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Right? I get it. We know that mm -hmm. because we love our brothers. Right? We haven't... It doesn't say... Right? So it's it's the emphasis. Right. It's not... We know... We pass from death to life because we love our brothers. Right. It's... We know that we pass from death to life. Because because we love our brother. That's what shows it. That's right. the fruit, the witness. Right. Okay. Yeah. Does, okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's it's we know that because we see the fruit of the faith. Um. And so not not that we know yeah. that by loving our brothers we pass from death to life. So it, it's it's that whole cart before the horse thing uh, which comes first faith or works faith always comes before works mm -hmm. and so but yeah just because of the um, just because of the way that it's worded um, and, so, and a lot of times it's a translation yeah. thing or it took me a minute to see that so alright okay so um, verse 15 it says anyone who hates his brother is a murderer and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. So can murderers or people that hate be saved? Yes. Right? But so the scripture says no. That's what it says. No murderer. Let's take it up with John and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, See, can, we, we don't judge. All right. we can't, we're not able to I judge. I think the murderer can be saved. But the murderer... Who abides in murder can't be saved. Okay. And maybe that's why they put hater there, because that to me indicates a constant, continual uh, attitude of sin, of whatever right. the sin is. Right. But, yeah. but if so and so who is a murderer asks God's forgiveness. And knows Christ as his Savior, he is saved. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you and if you have faith in God, you have saving faith. Um, are you gonna? Are you going to continue to to hate? No. No, you can't. I'm not saying it's going to change overnight, although it does often. Uh -huh. But yeah, but you won't abide in that. You won't walk in that. Right. Right. Yeah, are you still going to deal with anger and, and you know and even even struggle with with hatred or whatever? Sure. Are you going to wallow in your hatred? No. no you're going to try to get away from that. All right? all right. And let me tell you something, especially when it comes to something like hatred. All right. You can be really angry at someone, but boy, when you recognize that that is somebody that Jesus died for, that is a soul that that Christ has rescued from hell. It's really hard to say no. I'd rather they were in hell. Hmm. Well, they're just like uh, I often think about, like the Apostle Paul. Uh, and he was going after all these Christians, and he condemned Stephen's, and he held his coat while the other guys stoned him to death. And then Christ turned him around. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to shoot. This guy's going to suffer a lot for me before you know. It was quite interesting, you know, that, uh, wow. 
Yeah. So Paul was really, if you think about it, I mean, he could be called a murderer <laughs> because of what he did. He absolutely was, he did. and he calls himself a murderer. I think he did. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's why he did. says, "I'm the chief of so sinners," because Don I persecuted right. the Church of Christ. A murderer can be saved. What do you know? Ding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don. We'll give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's probably a good place to stop right at the end of the chapter. Then. Okay. You know, and I've always had trouble with because something that was just that anyway. I can forgive, but I can't forget. Uh. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, let me tell you, um, I had somebody that came to me one time and said, and I was, I was the vicar at the time, he said, vicar, the Bible says that, um, you know, Jesus said when he was teaching the Lord's Prayer, he said, if, if you don't forgive your brother from your heart, that the, the Father will not forgive you. And she says, I'm scared because I was raped. And I want to forgive the guy that did it to me. But I can't. Every time I think about him, I, I, I just I get all, you know, torn up and, and, and angry and, and, and upset and everything. And she says, I just, I can't let it go. Mm. I said, tell me, do you want him to, to suffer? Do you want him to go to hell? Do you want him, you know, you know bad things to happen to him? She says, no, I, I want him to know Jesus. I want him, you know, to be saved and, and turn away from that. And, you know, so if I said, then you have forgiven him. Mm -hmm. I agree. You don't hate him. Mm -hmm. So then you're saying, <laughs> since like I say, oh, I forgive, but I can't forget, then I really haven't forgiven if I haven't forgotten. Well, no, no, no. What I'm, what I'm saying is that all right, the way our brains work, we can't just forget. God can. If it happened, he's, it happened. Yeah, it happened. This is something I'll never understand about God. He knows everything, and yet he says, I will remember your sin no more. He can forget our sin. He knows what happened, but he's forgotten our sin. I, how's that work? I don't know. Okay. But God can do that. He's God. He can do anything. He wants to forget our sin. He can forget our sin. All right? And yet... Um, and still know all things at the same time. For us, we can't just like purge that from our heads. I heard about a doctor in Los Angeles now that claims that he can, but I'm kind of skeptical and sounds dangerous to me. But, yeah. um, but so that's still there, all right. And as long as as that's there, and there's nothing we can do about it, it's, it's not something you're going to forget about, mm -hmm. all right. It's 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 yeah. burned into your brain like as much as a brand on a cow, all right. Um, but and, and, and when you think about it you feel hurt and, and, and upset and, and, and sad and, and you know and all that kind of stuff and it brings up all these kind of emotions all right but that's not hatred that's hurt mm -hmm. right um, the same as if you're if you're um, you know you you, you hurt you you old football injury or you know whatever it is um and and it comes back and, and you know and, and it hurts again and it hurts again and it hurts again right but the question is what's your attitude toward that person right do, they, do you still feel hurt when you think about them well you know what that's probably not going to change this side of heaven okay um but the question is, is where do you, what do you do with that? All right? Are you saying, oh, every time I think about this person, I'm mad, and I really hope, want God to strike them down, keep them from hearing the gospel so they don't come to faith, so they go to hell, and, you know. Mm -hmm. All right? That's hatred. That's not forgiveness. Okay? But hatred and forgiveness say, God, I don't want to hang on to this. All right? I'm putting this in your hands. All right? I don't want to feel this hurt right because because hatred hangs on to the hurt mm -hmm. and 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 wallows in that hurt because that then it that 
it, it feeds off of the, the hatred feeds off the hurt and you know and makes it worse um but but when we take that to god and say god i don't i don't want to hurt all right and and the person that did this to me i don't want them to hurt either i want them to know your love so that they don't do this to somebody else and so that so that they recognize the hurt that they have caused so that they will repent of it and receive your forgiveness all right that's love that's that's it's forgiveness, forgiveness. All right. it's, it's sort of well you read it in the scripture and and when God or Christ he, he talked about love and he was emphatic about it he said you don't hate what I made he said you can't hate this person all you know and you might have did something wrong but he's you know you can't hate mm -hmm. he's, right he's you don't have no love in you you're you don't I want no part of you right right but yeah, it's important to remember, right? And, you know, here's another way to think about it. Jesus said, love your neighbor. He didn't say, like them. Yeah. Yeah, right? That's right. Okay? <laughs> and a lot of people, you know, there's, there's a guy that um, he was saying, you know, he's talking to his, his um, you know, prospective father-in-law, getting ready to be married, and he says, and, and the guy says, son... Do you talking about his his fiance? Do you like her? Oh, sir, I love her. That's not what I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Do, you know, and you know, and and so there are gonna be people in your life that just rub you the wrong way, that you can't stand to be around. Right. Okay. You can't hate them. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> but does does that mean? that you want that person to go to hell you know or for that matter do you still want that person in church you know and there's there's something to think about is you know there's probably people in church that irritate you okay what do you you know are you still glad that they're there even though they drive you nuts and they you know what for whatever they distract you or you know and and they really you kind of try to avoid them you know. And it's kind of hard to go to communion oh, that's a if one. you are angry with somebody. Oh. I've been angry with Larry on, on Sunday mornings, and it's I can't go to communion if I'm angry with him. So I have to stop being angry. No, I'm never angry with him. <laughs> now if we see that you don't go up for communion. We're going to Larry and say, what poor you do, Larry, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not watching right now. So. <laughs> I, I do. I do. Pardon? Was Larry there this morning? I mean, I'm, I'm curious. Now. Yeah. No, oh, he, no. Was he was here. doing the PowerPoint. So. He was here. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Because yeah. I, I don't right remember. I don't recall seeing Larry at all today. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. Not in communion. I mean, that's a good point too. But really, or with someone all, in the church, you know, I might be really upset with the pastor. <laughs> If I'm angry with the Probably pastor right, on so. Sunday morning, I should say that instead of Larry. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, But true. really, truly, when you go up to take communion, and if you're angry, I, I don't, you just, you, boy, you, you, you either give that to God. I mean, it's just, you can't, you just can't drink that wine and take that bread. You just can't do it. You're supposed to settle it before you go up there. Yeah, yeah. well, sometimes I've been right there at the rail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and but you just can't do I, it. I, I talk to a lot of people that, you know, that struggle with, with anger issues and, and things like that. And, and, you know, and some people, they're just, they're, they're, it's in their genes, all right? They're uh, certain people, and they've actually found that there's a genetic link to anger. Um, that, that people that, mm. that really, really get angry... All right, you inherited that from your parents. Well, um, give that right. And, crap. Right. But, <laughs> you know, crap but <laughs> what, I, what I tell them if they have a hard time with anger, forgiveness, and things like that, you know, here's the thing to remember How much has God forgiven you? How many times have you sinned against God that He's forgiven you? Now, ask yourself, how, how does that compare with the number of times this person has sinned against you? And I guarantee you that no matter how many times this person has sinned against you, it is nowhere near the number of times that God has forgiven you. All right, mm -hmm. and and He continues to forgive you. And so if you know if if He has forgiven you all of that, can you forgive this whatever small in comparison amount? You know. 
That was off, right? No, it's done. Oh, you're going to edit it, right? No, I bet Larry was listening. No, he was. I, I was checking. There's zero <laughs> viewers <laughs> right you. now. No, I, I was just... <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want Larry to think I was ever angry with him. He's such a sweet guy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You better throw your hand in the door when you go home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, both of you are really sweet guys. <laughs> uh, you're just two of the nicest people oh, I know. Thank you. Way. thank you. You're very kind. I don't want that go to your head. <laughs> oh, <I won't. laughs> well, uh, bef before it gets any darker, we should close the prayer. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that you've given to us and, and for uh, the opportunity to just to, to, to wallow in your love and, and to... Um, to enjoy the, the blessing. Help us to, to take that love and, and just let it pour forth from our lives into all that we need. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No, I like that.